Afternoon, well, evening now, everybody. Um, perhaps we'll just both introduce ourselves first and, and tell you a little bit about what we do and where we work. So my name is Jenny Craig, and I have the real privilege of being Principal and CEO of Buckinghamshire College Group. Buck's College Group is very much a skills-based uh, training college, so we absolutely deliver technical and vocational skills to over 5,000 uh, students, most of whom are aged 16 to 18, but across a whole range of different industry sectors. Uh, so certainly as part of the film and TV sector, uh, we train over 400 students a year uh, in a whole range of uh, subjects, and I'm, I'm looking at my team to make sure that I get this right. Uh, but things like TV uh, and film production, prosthetics, CG animation, games design, uh, you name it. But what we also do is we train hundreds of young people to go into the supporting industries as well, e.g. construction students, electricians, hair and makeup artists, etc. So, so it's a whole range of things that we do, and certainly to the point that people were making earlier about uh, schools in particular not valuing technical skills. Well, certainly in further education, we absolutely do. That, that's what we do. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. My name is June McMahon and I'm proud to be head of BFBS Academy. Robert has come and visited us on a couple of occasions. Um, we are an academy that was set up primarily to support the veteran community, military veterans. We appreciate from a transferable skills perspective that when um, people leave the military, actually there's a huge amount of transferable skills that can easily dovetail within the media industry. Um, we've previously run four years of creative media production, which is a level four course. I'm proud to say that 86% of our graduates are currently working within the TV and film industry, which as you know, all of you in education, that's a huge amount. Thank you. <laughs> that wasn't easy, believe me. Um, at the moment, we, um, we're looking at the very reactive to the industry, we work very closely with the industry. Um, especially post-Brexit and Covid, we realised that there was a dearth of skill sets in relation to production management and production coordinating. So we went to our trustees, we're, we're a charity, and we asked if we could get funding to actually start up a six-month production management course, which Robert visited us recently. So that's what we're doing. Our graduates are going to be um, leaving us in about three weeks' time. So any of you out there want fantastic production managers and production coordinators? Oh, well, see, Kim, Kim's right in front of you, who's our curriculum manager. Please go and see Kim. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, and June and I were having a bit of a chat before we, uh, before we came here um, about the key things that we found that work in terms of technical education and making sure that all of our students and graduates are as well prepared as they can be to enter into the industry. Even if perhaps for, for me that they're right at the very beginning of their, their careers or certainly transferring careers as well with you June. And one of the key things I think we talked about was very much that collaboration and making sure that we're co-designing and co-delivering the curriculum. So co-designing with employers in the industry and also having opportunities to co-deliver. Um, and what we try and do is build in lots and lots of opportunities for our students to interact with people who are working in the industry, who can tell them what it's really like in the industry, uh, particularly in terms of expectations, whether that's uh, timing, whether that's uh, making sure that you know, they can meet production run schedules, etc. Um, so that it's as realistic a learning environment as we can try and do and actually you know, we want to do as much of that as we can, so anybody here that, that's interested in collaborating with us, that would be great. But I think we found that that was quite a common theme, that co-design and co-delivery. Absolutely, we talked a lot about um, the word etiquette, which is an interesting word, and the word how to behave on a studio floor, on a film set. You can't, it's quite difficult sometimes, I was all, all of us were new to the industry, how when you walk onto a studio floor, how to behave. There is a hierarchy, we have to accept that, and there is a way of doing things in a collaborative way, in an appropriate way, and quite frankly, that's a soft skill that we teach day one. It's really super important, and I guess, hopefully, that's why our students go on and our alumni go on to actually work in the industry, because they learn that that's in very intrinsic in their day-to-day -day practice. 
And I think another thing we talked about, and actually it's already been mentioned today, about experiential learning. Um, and so the, the way that we teach is really important. Uh, so we try and teach through project-based learning um, because it's, it's actually really hard to teach a student to collaborate, to communicate. Actually, what you've got to do is build it as sort of golden threads throughout everything that you do with them and give the students lots of opportunities to practice, to learn, to get it wrong, to see the consequences of getting it wrong, trying to have to rectify it. And so we build in real life, usually where possible employer-led projects, mm -hmm. so that students know that they've got to achieve something at the end. Along the way, they tick off a whole load of assessment criteria and get a fantastic grade. But actually, it's the learning on those projects that really makes the difference. And I know you were saying you, you do something quite similar. Yeah, absolutely. And for us as well, we talk about industry, we've been really privileged. It's slightly, I guess, slightly more easy for us in that our adult, they're adult learners from our perspective. So when um, industry offer us work placement, it's easier, we can send them without any chaperones, etc. Um, but industry already have been really, really good to us across the entire board. And so many of our students after work experience have then been offered roles. And that for us is amazing. It's wonderful. So thank you industry for supporting us. <laughs> And actually an ask from me, and I think a challenge that we face when um, we're encouraging young people to, to see this sector as a, as a really vibrant sector and something within which they can find uh, their own place. For under 18 year olds, uh, it's actually a real challenge for us to find really good, meaningful work experience placements. And certainly I don't know whether anyone's heard of the T level. Um, but when the T-level in broadcast media production comes on stream next year, uh, there is a, an obligation in there for students to, to study about a 45-day industry placement, not necessarily with the same employer. But if they don't achieve that, then they don't pass their T-level. Um, and if actually, if that's the key technical route and the technical qualification for a 16-year-old into this industry, uh, we've got a challenge, I think, between educators and employers to find out how we can make that work and think creatively so that's a, a sort of challenge to, to throw out really absolutely okay i think you're right i know anybody seen the government advert no uh, no so you're right and two think, educators <laughs> in the cinema oh. Okay. Yeah, so, t so T levels, just as a very quick um, recap, uh, brand new uh, level three, so A level equivalent qualification, one T level equals three A levels. Um, and it's, those are designed with employers. There are particular ones related to particular sectors. So the media broadcast and production one will come online next September. Um, and it's sort of 80% of time spent in uh, college learning environments. 20% of the time spent uh, out on industry placement. So it's the flip of an apprenticeship, if you like, which is 80% on the job, 20% on the college classroom. So, it, so it's, it's that way. It's coming, coming to a, a college very near you very soon. Um, and the other thing I think I wanted to talk about as well was, and I think this is one of the things that makes our education, so the technical education, very different from perhaps school-based education, is we make sure that we employ teachers who have worked in the industry. And so not only know what it's like, um, you know, from a, from a theoretical point of view, but have actually been in the industry, have worked in the industry, and know how it actually works for the students. Absolutely, I concur with that. And actually, I will say from an, an education perspective, I'm an example of somebody who worked in the media industry for many years, definitely more than two digits. Um, but I went and worked, um, I was appro went, approached with the FE sector and I was actually supported financially to do my postgraduate, my PGCE, and I subsequently did a master's. That is something that um, from an, an industry perspective, we must encourage that industry practitioners who proactively want to move into education, we should be still financially supporting that because that overall increases the you know the, the efficacy of everything we do so I was really I was really um, surprised first of all that I was offered that but really gracious and actually Adamson College is where I did it so it, it comes full circle Jenny
Exactly, on alumni right here. Um, <laughs> and I think it's, it's also thinking about creative and innovative ways to collaborate. So we work uh, closely with creative media, creative media skills in Pinewood. It's a level four course and we work together so they bring in industry experts in sort of six week blocks if you like to to teach our students and we provide uh, the pastoral set, um, care the support for the assessment the liaison with the awarding body all of that stuff but we all work together um, and our students get a fantastic experience whether that's prop making whether it's set direction whatever it is and, and it's a really innovative way to meld those two things together so the industry and education for the benefit of the students. Perfect. I'm looking at this gentleman, you look like we're almost out of time, are we? No? Oh. He's relaxed. Please, oh, he's very relaxed, isn't he? Can I, can I ask you about yes. what your move to Wickham is? is oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, good point. Good question, uh, Robert. So at the moment we have three campuses. We have a campus in Aylesbury and we have a campus in uh, Amersham and one in Flatwell Heath. Uh, and we've got plans to transition our provision from Amersham and Flatwell Heath into a brand new campus right in the heart of High Wycombe. So we know for our students that accessibility is absolutely key. Um, so being right in the heart of High Wycombe, we're opposite the bus station, we're about five minutes walk from the train station, uh, that will make that much more accessible and it will be a brand new sort of eight storey uh, technical education facility. We're hoping to open that in September 25, we've got the majority of our planning permission through, uh, just a few um, sort of wrangles to, to go with that. But what we'll be doing is moving um, and transitioning all of our creative uh, provision from Amersham into that uh, new building. And it's giving us a great opportunity to really think how we do that, think about the resources, uh, the teaching facilities, et cetera, that we need and make sure that we build those in right from the ground up. So that's really exciting for us. Um, and, and that should be yeah, two years time.